talk big picture for the year with Jim Bianco, the president at Bianco Research. Jim, I feel like we've had like five years in one, at least just measuring by the yield curve, right? We went through like three different cycles. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the volatility in the bond market is that way, you know, that uh, you blink and you miss a decent year here. But don't worry, there'll be another year next week as well that you can either capture. So where should we like wait our discussion then? Because if we go back in the first quarter, you know, the expectations that we were going to head off an economic cliff, uh, I, you know, some would argue that's why we're now getting rate cuts priced in. But that never really happened and we're pricing them in anyway. So which uh, part of the year is really the most determining factor for what we talk about next year? Yeah, you're right. There is a bit of deja vu when it comes to the economic forecast and the um, and the bond, at least the bond market outlook. Uh, where have we seen this before about a slowdown and lots of rate cuts? A year ago, and everybody put out their 2023 forecast. It was actually far more pessimistic than what we're seeing right now because there they were calling for a recession, but now they've kind of upgraded it to that mythical soft landing. But I do think that 2024 is really going to come down to the case of whether or not the economy does slow. Now, I say that recognizing it's a $30 trillion economy, you can always give me an antidote here, antidote there of somewhere where there's, there, there's problems. But if you look at the top line data, it doesn't look like there's really any, any major issue with the economy right now. Initial claims are very low. The unemployment rate has been under 4% now for 22 months, the longest in 53 years. Uh, the GDP trackers are saying that the fourth quarter might be at 2.5%, if not higher. Remembering the third quarter was 5%, and that was a smoking quarter. To come down to average the quarter after that means that we're in very good shape. And the question then becomes, does that lead to a stronger economy than we think in 24? and potentially a reacceleration of inflation. Now I'm talking about three, three and a half percent type of acceleration to inflation, mm. in which case all of this hope of lower interest rates in 24 might be dashed. I guess it depends on when that growth kicks in. The Fed right now, uh, rather I should say Atlanta Fed is pushing up their expectations to the high twos. We had that big, nice juicy print for uh, Q3 GDP. Uh, when do you suspect some of these forces might uh, start to support inflation a little bit more strongly? I think they are right now because, you know, if you look at the inflation data, as we've seen, it bottomed in June. I know on a year over year basis, we hit 3.0% in June. For November, we're at 3.1%. And that should probably uptick for the December number, which will get reported in middle of January. So it's looking like the inflation rate might be bottoming. Uh, we're at around 4% on core inflation. That should come down into the threes. But I'm not so sure that we're going to make that next step into the twos unless we get a hard landing, an actual slowdown in the economy that creates unemployment, creates earnings losses, and creates misery. But short of that, even with the soft landing, I think that the story is going to remain that inflation is going to stay sticky. And I know that that is a call that I've had now. I've had this call for a couple of years, but I also know it's a call that has not been working for the last six months or so. But as I look at the data, I don't see a reason to say, no, something has changed in the last two months to suggest that the economy is really in a different trajectory than where it was in the early part of the fall. I like the uh, transparency on the views. I will add by saying that again, this year was like so many mini cycles that while the last uh, you know three, four months have maybe has not gone the way of that sticky inflation, hey, we are ending the year with the 10 year just slightly above where it began because of all the upside in the first half. So it really kind of depends on one's perspective here. Uh, Jim, what do you think would constitute surprise enough on the inflation front at this point for the Fed to, to rethink some of their more uh, uh, relaxed commentary as of late? Uh, I think it would probably take a couple of months for the Fed to really, you know, uh, you know, change. I don't think that a bad December number or a bad January number 
would do it in and of itself. I think right now what they're and I also think what might be really coming in the forefront is uh, what Chicago Fed President Austin Goolsbee is really focused on right now. He's saying we're going to have to focus back on employment, but I don't think it's going to be the way he thinks it's going to be. We're going to focus back on employment. We're going to say, man, that, the employment market is really strong and wage inflation is going to be you know, sticky in the 4 and 3% range. And remember, if you're getting a 4% raise, you can afford 3 or 4% inflation. And that's the problem with sticky wages. And I think that that's what we might wind up seeing more in 24 than the opposite. Look, I, again, I'll also point out, my call is premised on this bigger picture idea that the cycles changed in 2020 mm. and that we are in a different cycle. So when people say, but in 1990 and 2000, I always say, stop, that was a different cycle. I think that between work from home, deglobalization, the impact of completely shutting down and restarting the globalist economy, that we're in a bit of a different cycle right now. And that different cycle is going to breed stronger growth, stickier inflation, and an era of higher interest rates. Mm -hmm. I love that uh, justification. Okay, uh, because there's a lot of good things actually in there that you know uh, we should hope for, to be honest, <laughs> as, right. as Americans in the economy, right? Maybe not the super, you know, uh, sticky inflation if we've got 3% growth. I mean, isn't that kind of like what the central bank wanted to get for a long time? Yeah, you know, what I'm actually arguing is, is kind of a, an optimistic outlook. I mean, things are moving along and things are going to be okay. And the economy, you know, the job market, as I like to say about the job market, it's a lot more transactional than we've seen before. What that means is people are not afraid to quit their job because their boss wants them to come back five days a week. They'll find another one. So they think that their work is a little bit more transactional. And since they're comfortable, and we've had a 19-year high in the number of strikes that we saw during the UAW strike and the Hollywood strike and the Kaiser Permanente strike all happening at the same time, uh, that they're a lot more comfortable with jobs. They're a lot more comfortable with spending. Uh, don't worry about it. I will get a paycheck next week and the week after. And if I have to, I'll go find another job and I'll keep getting a paycheck. So go ahead, let's book that trip to the Bahamas. Let's go anyway. And that's kind of the attitude that I think we're having. Now, that attitude will breed higher interest rates. And that is the problem that everybody's faced because they've been so comfortable or used to the idea of near zero interest rates for 15 years that this higher interest rate environment is worrisome to them. Mm. But I'd like to point out to everybody these are the interest rates we saw during 2000s and the 1990s and the 1980s, and we did just fine during those periods as well. So we have to start to think that we are now in a different interest rate regime, and no 7% mortgages does not mean the end of the housing market. I know everybody wants to think it does because they're used to 3%. That was a different era. We're in a new era right now. Well, even we saw uh, for much of this year, rates were going up and the big tech trade was doing all right. The uh, mag sevens, I mean, maybe there's a little AI surprise, the ace up the sleeve there, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast. They're always coming up with innovative things. So if rates uh, do follow the path you see, does that have to be a death knell for big tech in the NASDAQ, Jim? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, what I do think it might be, and this is probably the most controversial thing I'm looking for in 24 and 25, is we are going to go back to an era of stock picking. And I've been on the forefront of saying for 15 years, stock picking is a dead art form. Just buy SPY or buy some other broad based ETF and away we go. And now all of a sudden, what I think is going to happen in an era of higher interest rates, because if you can get five and 6% interest rates consistently, and if the stock market is going to return you 8% over the long term, as uh, the new edition of uh, Stocks for the Long Run by Dr. Jeremy Siegel is suggesting, I'm getting two thirds of the stock market's gain without any market risk in a money market fund. So what gets me to reach for that other third is individual stories, individual ideas, mm. as opposed to buy SPY and hope that you can go from five to eight. Look, 2019, when, when money market funds were zero, SPY was a no brainer. That was the Tina world. We're not in the Tina world right now. So. Peter Lynch can come out of retirement. We need stock pickers again. That's what the AI story was all about, was a specific theme of companies in the MAG7 companies. They worked very well in 2024. 
And I think that there's going to be a lot of stories that are going to work very well. You know, I'm sorry, in 2023. I think there's a lot of stories that are going to work very well in 2024. But if you're going to be demanding that the RTY, the Russell 2000 or IWM, it's ETF, and SPY, the S&P 500, that those work and that those go up, mm. man, this might be more like the 80s or 90s when the indexes did okay. But man, if you caught the right themes within individual stocks, you did much more better than okay, bad English there for you. But I think that that's <laughs> the era that we're, we're, we're gonna be returning to, not necessarily in 24, but we're gonna keep going back to that kind of era in the next several years. All right, seems like we got a little bit of a taste of it already this year. You got some dispersion within sectors. So even though the indexes are doing well, uh, got underneath the surface, maybe some of what you're describing already building and a good setup for our next conversation, too. We're going to look at how some of the big cap mega tech trades have separated. Thanks, Jim Bianco, for the macro setup.